Hello there everyone and welcome back to TNO, the last series of Europe. I'm your host, Mr. Anarchy Lover, but right now, we have to unite Anarchy. Mikhail sat back in his chair, tired after a long day of reading reports and negotiating with local commune leaders. After 20 years as a leader in a general in the Black Army, if he had to learn one thing, it was that administering a territory was always harder than conquering him. One might think that allowing the communes their own rights and shifting the duties of governance onto them would make his life easier, but that never seemed to be the case. Mikhail found his office always filled with the sound of fierce arguments. As he clashed with commune leaders endlessly about how much material he could provide them and how many men he needed from the communes. It was a constant tug of war between him and the communes he had been assigned to protect. On his desk lay, lay, a series of maps and files pertaining to some recently conquered territory that he had been assigned to administrate. Mikhail sighed as he sat up in his seat, picking up the main map outlining the new territory. Building communes from the ground up was never easy, and integrating them into the greater whole of the free territory was even harder. The task would necessitate yards of paperwork, and worse yet, he would still have yet another communal leader to squabble with. On the flip side, the region was still full of insurgents, hoping to separate from the free territory. He could simply put the region under martial law and directly administer the new territory. He could establish that commune's elections later. And in the meantime, it would certainly make his job easier. Mikhail rubbed his eyes and pondered what to do. There are way too many decisions, but a couple comments as well. Uh, someone did comment, and they were absolutely 100% correct, that we need two-thirds of the majority to pass. Not just a simple majority, but a two-thirds majority. So 6-8 now, and right now we're doing Promote Black Army Discipline as well. And play as Mexico if they content. I don't know whether the time is recording if they do or not. Which does kind of suck if they don't. And they're by Mateos. Cool. Very nice. And then uh, Mother Anarchy. Yes. More Anarchy. Mother Anarchy. No Father Anarchy. But faith in the newly conquered territories, integrated territories, and strike the balance of power. The Black Army is undeniably a powerful authority, and we've had to rely greatly upon them throughout all of our struggles and expansion. Such a reliance is worrying to many, and the fears of the Black Army eventually forming a military junta in all but name are widespread, of course. We're going to allow such a tragedy to occur, especially after coming so far. To prevent the Black Army from controlling too much power, we must take efforts to reinforce the Soviets and communes, strengthening the civilian councils, combined with transferring Black Army tasks to other, more representative organs, will allow us to maintain our anarchist ideals even in the facts or face of extending threats. communications. One of the biggest issues that we have encountered in our expansion is a lack of communication ability. It can take days or even weeks to find about various events that occur in the more rural areas. Furthermore, the need for better communication and coordination with our rural comrades is critical in this time of reorganization, as access to superior resources and ending any lurking threats are matters of the utmost importance. This communication expansion will be done by extending telegraph lines, building new radio towers, and constructing a modern phone system, allowing us to reach even the most isolated of communities. No longer will we be left in the dark when it comes to rural matters. Nice. And then enshrine the material rights. Uh, cast down social injustice. Libertarian social values. Nice. And then correct the misguided teachings. How's this one? Throughout the centuries, the Russian states, in whatever form they may have taken, have created a culture of inequality. Women are, for often more than not, seen as inferior to men, and consigned to them be housewives. People of other races have faced similar criticism, being viewed with suspicion for no other reason than being than prejudice. However, the group who has had it the worst of all are homosexuals. They barely have even a right to exist, with many having persecuted those unlucky enough to be revealed. Such prejudices have no place in an anarchist society. We must work to break the chains that shackle our women and show people that race is merely appearance and nothing more and allow our homos, uh, comrades, to finally be able to freely love whomever they want. And hotline anarchy. It had been three weeks since the trucks had started passing through their small town. Vadim had noticed the men coming through town uh, first one day as he played on the field, coming and speaking with our local council after a while. A few more men came with measuring devices and some sort of planner. He had learned to be suspicious of such government men whenever they came. They had only met trouble in the past. Vadim shudders he remembered back in those days when Papa had been sent off to fight. Such men were easy to spot in a village of only 500. Most everyone knew everyone. Yet these men didn't look like the other ones. They were wore blue cover overalls or coveralls, instead of those green military coats, and they didn't seem interested in taking anyone away. In fact, all they seemed interested in was putting up those big wooden poles connected by the long black cables. Vadim was perplexed. Strangely, on his way home, he saw more men in blue coveralls putting up his big blue blocks, or big blocks, in the middle of town, and the entire town surrounding them as they tried to connect the black cables to the big box. Everyone seemed to watch in anticipation of something, but what that was, Vadim did not know. All of a sudden, a click was heard as a cable connected to the box. Everyone watched with bated breath as one of the men in blue coveralls picked up the phone with just two words, as if he who had just set a firecracker off the crowd. The townsfolk cheered and hugged each other as Vadim looked on, confused as to the meaning of the words. He twisted them around in his mouth and repeated them as if to gain a better understanding. Hello, operator? 
correct the misguided teachings. Education is undoubtedly the foundation of our future, after all. It is education that instills values in the youth, and is education that people refer back to throughout their life. While there are aspects of the old Soviet and CSR teachings that many that were taught correctly and properly, there are many other aspects that must be retaught to the populace in order for them to become model anarchists. Most importantly, we must highlight the failures of the states to bring long-term stability and peace to central Siberia, and similarly showcase how anarchist thought will succeed where the puppet democracy and state of thought has failed. It may take time, and people will finally understand the truth of anarchism. Now, over here, I'm, we gotta keep an eye on the economy just because the debt to GDP ratio is not bad right now. It's pretty good. Also, we did the other one, another motion, just getting more social support as well as more political power. So, honestly, it's not bad. I just I gotta keep that keep that in mind. Um, 0.1 billion. Obviously, I cut down army expending right now. It's not super important. Yeah, it hurts the amount of army professionals we do get. It's not really that much at all, to be honest with you. But, I don't know. I just want to make sure that we don't spend too much. Spending more is not bad, but still. Um, getting more tap, temp tax cut sounds kind of like fun, but at the same time, as much as we would like to, and cut down the debt, even though it doesn't really mean too much. Uh, let's go do one more motion here first. We just did this one. Um, military improvement would be pretty good. Expand infrastructure would probably be pretty good as well. Getting free infrastructure is pretty nice. Or we can do this one. Let's try something different. Communal investment sounds pretty good to me. We have enough thermonuclear plants, and we get more political power with despotism, but kind of want to stop doing despotist stuff. How, how good are we right now? Oh, we're actually pretty good. 14, 21%. Uh, I want that political power. Yeah, we'll do it anyways. Why not? Screw it. So here, we are 3 and 5, which is pretty bad for us, but whatever. They're minus 1. Is it, minus 2 is pretty bad. Minus 1, minus 1, minus 1. Oh, I'll do concession. Uh, request weapons? Yes. If you want to read about that, please go ahead. They support us. And now we need to do one more here. Uh, need to consume goods? All right. Of course, of course. And so we need one more, too. And I'll come down here. And what do they want? Request funding. Anything for our comrades? More G CGDP? At the cost of a little bit more debt? Fine with us. So, let's come back down here and see what we can do. More stability. Okay, weekly stability goes... Oh, that's actually not... Wow! We get a lot more debt, but... Weekly stability goes up by 2% every week? Adds production of a lot more electricity and a thermoelectric plant. Wow. Uh, I want more social development, though. Ooh, that's not bad. Ooh, that's not bad either. Hiring foreign instructors is pretty decent, too. Equipment, equipment is very good, too. Expertise and a bonus to industry, which... Actually, it looks like it got nerfed pretty pretty highly. It got a pretty big nerf. 20% research bonus is not as great as it used to be. 30% more construction speed. Um, that seems not bad. 20% chance of increasing some stuff here. Slightly decreased coring time. Increases our GDP by 5%. That's not bad either. Repurpose Soviet infrastructure is not bad either. I love the chances that you might get different stuff here. And a power workers organizations. Popularity of the government shall increase. Not bad. Industrial expertise will slowly begin to improve. Let's go and do foreign instructors first. And then, I think I want to try the land reform. You get more GDP? That sounds awesome to me. We have a little bit more debt, but... Oh, well. We still have 5% real growth. So that's what matters. Cast along social injustice. Correct the teachings. And honestly, this construction tab is not really worth as much as it used to be. It's still important to do. Don't get me wrong. But it's not really important. We do have 17 divisions here, so we're looking pretty good. I mean, that's why I cut down military austerity. Or did military austerity. Because it just costs so much. So... I can't wait to raid and just... Well, I wish we could continue raiding, but whatever. I just want to beat people up. Um, when, when do we get the credit rating? I want a credit rating. As long as, as, long as it's not junk, I'll be okay, I'll be happy with it. So we have three research slots, of course. And we're doing okay. We're out of artillery, which sucks. Uh, Anti-tank is pretty good to grab, too. We're pretty good on that. We need more planes. We've got plenty of guns. Oh, people are just killing each other all over the place here, so. And there goes Poland. But yeah, I definitely want to do 5% more. It's not bad. 0.5. It's not bad. I like that. More GDP, please. Yes, yes. And of course, education is not bad, but industrial equipment is pretty good, too. And we did restore the Soviet infrastructure once again. With the first leg of our expedition neurals complete, we can now haul in heavy construction equipment to restore the old Soviet system, our excavation infrastructure back to working condition. Freedom for all, except my husband and I were attacked. The man wiped tears from his eyes as he choked out the sentence. Another day, another speech to the most apathetic security council. Such was the joys of leaving the free territory open to all. The necessity of speeches were often uh, dubious at best, but it was still their right to speak, even if no action came. Today was unlike the rest. More than just the usual, two members of the council were listening intently. General Stepanov leaned forward in his seat, while was obviously turning his head. Pyotr Siuda similarly was listening intently, but he wasn't alone. We didn't even do anything. We were just walking to the grocer, and he, he stopped to look at something in the shop. The owner came out, and he was just shouting. He called us evil and disgusting bastardization of the Lord's image. It was just something dumb. The guy was selling flowers, and well, he loves flowers. Well, we were in the largest garden in a commune, actually. I'm sorry for I'm rambling. Stepanov dropped his pen on the desk and shook his head. I'm not going to force you to explain anymore. What happened to you is disgusting and should never happen to anyone in this free society. Peter's head swayed from side to side as he considered the traumatic experience. It was a couple's right to do as they pleased, but it was also the right of the man to shout, was it not? Peter, usually overflowing with things to say, was usually silent. 
Uncle, comrade, Valentine spoke for him. Well, what happened to you is horrible. I could not wish that upon my own, however. I do believe it was firmly his right in this society to not only just, just deny service to you, deny service to you, but voice his opinion under practices. Bickering quickly broke out between the members of the council, with most agreeing the shop owner was acting out of line, but the division spurring about whether it was his right to deny someone due to their sexuality. Following Stepanov of command in silence, comrades, we must see this as not a lone issue, but a larger one that threatens to tear up our territory as a whole. I motion to make it a priority of this body that we end injustice on every level, even in the personnel. You are just as free as him or I. Resolution non discrimination become available. I don't like what he says, but I will defend his right to say it. Slide decreases sexual minorities. We get more authoritarian democracy. Uh. You are free as just as him or I. Non discrimination will become available. Well, isn't that kind of authoritarian to do as well? But I don't want to lose socialism. Oh, crap. We don't win either here. Either we lose socialism or we get more authoritarian democracy. Um. It seems like we'll probably take this one. Resolution non discrimination will become available. We'll do that one just because I don't want to lose any. I don't want to get more authoritarian democracy. I don't know. It seems like it's a lose lose there, so. Enshrine the material rights. Every human, no matter what, deserves a right to live. Of course, one cannot just merely live. People require material resources such as food and water. In order to ensure that we are truly upholding the right of everyone to live, we must also ensure that everyone, no matter who they are, has access to the necessities of life. In order to ensure this, we must help ensure that the communes are always able to provide what is necessary. Uh, <clears throat> For people to live. Obviously, this we won't form the communes of their duty, but we will also remind them that they have access to aid from the greater communes if they need be. We will ensure that life is able to prosper under anarchism. Nice. Let's get the next level too. Even though we're not really making any, but that's okay. We don't want to make garbage, right? That's right. We don't want to make garbage here. I'm yeah, we'll do that one next immediately. Yeah, 55 is not too bad. We we'll spend a little more money, more about the population, but 20% chance for increased health care, unemployment, political parties, multi-party system, trade unions. Maybe it's agricultural society, society development, but slightly decreased scoring times. Um, I like that one a lot. Even though, actually, you know, heavy machinery is also very good. But industrial equipment begins to improve immediately. But I want more GDP. Oh, the Indian National Congress splits, huh? All right. Because right now, what are we looking at? Cool. It's still going up. We have about a billion in deficit. I mean, we can wait for that one. You know, let's do the, let's do the uh, other thing. I do still do more poverty stuff, but I don't do heavy machinery. Let's at least get equipment done. Let's get one of these done first. So, poverty's looking not too bad. Equipment is going up by eight a month, which is actually not that bad. You can go up by ten a month. It's not bad. Oh, there goes the Soviet Republic. Good job, Aryan Brotherhood. Sculptures of the past. Peter Sioux had dug through the filing cabinet before him. It would be under sea, right? He was sure of it. He would never get the state credit, but for what it was worth, they knew how to keep records. To his left, General Ivan Stepanov is right. Mikhail killed Chichikov. And outside the room, demanding something to be done about all the men sitting around Androni Mishrenko. There was some comedy to the situation. The key members of the Security Council, the men responsible for the ascendancy of anarchism, pilfering around a college campus. It was very important to Peter and Stepanov, but it didn't stop the two from seeing the humor in it. All the while. All that training worthwhile, Ivan, they ever teach you how to pillage a college in war school? Stepanov only scoffed, continued to go through the files before him. Siuda chuckled to himself and continued to flick through the millions of papers occupying the cabinet. Found something, said Chil Kilchikov, producing a manila folder. On this cover was a proud symbol of the hammer sickle. Stepanov took the document from Mikhail and flipped open to the first page. Curriculum of the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics, it read, bold and spelled in capital letters. Stepanov handed the document to Siuda, who at least attempted to read each page diligently before Stepanov took the folder back. You can read it on your own time. We, ha we have what we're looking for now. This, along with other ones from the other college in the city, should now be more than enough for them to build an adequate curriculum. Ivan, you're too quick to accept Soviet teachings. We can keep looking. I'm sure we can find a curriculum here that suits the people's vision for the future, as Siyota said. Sipanov shook his head and countered. I hate them as much as you do, Pietro. I think it'd be best if we didn't restrict knowledge, but allow the people to choose what's best. Pietro considered this for most of the time. It is the people's choice. We never follow the teachings of the state. Oh, crap. Lose stability. Get more communism. Oh, which one? We, I don't want to lose... Com well, actually, we can lose communism. Communism. Oh, for the previous choice, then. Ooh, maybe we should have done the other choice. But then we could get lowered sexual minorities and discrimination and stuff. Um, whatever. Uh, we get more communism and authoritarian democracy. We'll never follow the teachings of the state. Well, we won't go more socialist, right? I, I, I apologize if I do screw this up. Like, I, I don't mean to screw it up too much, but... Yeah, authoritarian democracy goes down. And we don't want more communism. I keep forgetting that we're socialist, not communist. Yeah. There you go. And, oh, wow, look at that. Straight despotist now, and socialist. 
and vision or establish a provisional resource council. With their access to new lands and resources, many commons have pointed out the need to properly coordinate said resources so the communes can properly function to this end. We shall establish a provisional resource council. This council's main function will be ensuring the extraction and distribution of all resources within the free territory. To this the council will be composed of workers from resource gathering industries and representatives from areas who need resources. The council will hopefully be able to solve any and all needs from the cities and villages involving resources needs, while allowing the workers who produce said resources a place to be heard. Huh. Cool. So reduce admin strain, nice. And the orphan mandate for the Philippine Isles. Philippines unite the Isles. Nice. What are they doing? Wow. Show motions? Black Army training? Yes. Oh, wait. We can do resolution, non discrimination. The criminals with illegal protections. Oh, wow. Two and six. That sucks. Um, let's see. I want to spend stuff here first. Uh, Repo Soviet infrastructure is not bad. You have more GDP here, though, too. <sighs> Academics will slowly improve. 75 per chance. Workplace safety. Domestic construction. So they just going. Ah, get, give us the billions. I want the billions first. There you go. All right, so now let's go back up here and do this. They post negative two, negative one. Um, political autonomy. What's only fair? More clients support us. More chance. That's fine. That's fine. And do it again. Exactly the same thing. Okay, it's only fair. That's fine. Um, oppose is fine. That should have weapons. That's fine. Up here, concessions. That's fine. Political autonomy, it's fine. 6 to 2, nice. Uh, 64 Olympic Games, please don't spam it out. Please, game, please. Right, so where are we at now? 10.31, not bad. Better art artillery, very good. 2.1 billion in debt, not great, but it is a reality of life. Nice. Up next, propaganda. Ooh, actually, what does propaganda do? We need more stability, we really need more stability. Weekly stability goes up by 2.2. Oh, growing black army control. The power of the state grows. It is what it is. Honestly, that's not bad. That's really not bad at all. Because right now, it's hurting us with getting political power, organization, output. Fry, Anagra, and Chile. Alright. Or education. Or agriculture. Organization. Straight improvements, huh? What is this? Um, education. Slowly improve. Uh, you don't get a school anyways. Academic base will go up too. So this is going up by 5. That's not bad. Uh, equipment is going up by 8 still. To be or pro or reactive. Mikhail Kilchichikov scanned over the proposal on his desk. The plan authored by Stepanov seemed to like his usual shtick. Mikhail cared very little for anarchism, even less so for Stepanov. Mikhail liked numbers, numbers that made sense in a world where nothing did, even if he had never read Buch Bakunin, or any of only heard of Makhno in passing, Mikhail knew to how to make things work, and even Pietro had to admit it now every now and then. There's a lot of zeros on the figure here, Ivan, Mikhail said, peering over his glasses. I'm not going to bore you with the ideological implications of your little anti-poverty, or shall I say anti ciuda proposal here. What's more important to me is how you want to bring this about when I'm already differing a sizable portion of our budget to keep the boys stocked up with the most up-to-date guns money can buy. Stepanov leaned forward, folding his hands on Mikhail's desk. I assure the comrade Kilchichikov, what I am offering is not only feasible, but it's necessary. We'll have to be actively redistributing the wealth to the people. Think of how many lives we could be saving and improving this with this landmark agenda. Mikhail sighed and shook his head. Cut the crap, Ivan. I'm not Pietro. I'm not going to be swayed by people's struggle or whatever you call that horse scrap you just spouted at me. I'm looking at this from a solely pragmatic point of view. That's my job, yeah? I balance the bucks, you shoot the reactionaries. I don't see why you're even here. The current system of communal self-management works fine. They take the money they need and put it where they see fit, and why do we even have to get involved in the whole process? Stepanov scouted Mikhail, visibly angry, but not willing to drop his act just yet. It's important to not only myself, Mikhail, but to the army as well. Think about whose families this will save. Think about what they will think if the news breaks, breaks that Mikhail killed Chichikov, shot down this agenda, all the while accruing a not-so-small fortune. <clears throat> Mikhail glared at Stepanov, with the two sharing an intense battle just between each other's eyes. To each according to his needs. Inflation will increase. Poverty will begin to improve, though. But it's only 0.15 inflation. As you need it, you can have it. Oh. Oh, crap. Uh, inflation to each according as you need it, you can have it. We're getting more socialism here. Yeah, we don't want more despotism. My apologies, but yeah, not bad. No, twenty-three percent. Tax tab, 
We could do that one, but now nah, we'll see what happens. The last Congress of Kansk. With the rapid growth of the new lands for the Free Territory, it's become clear that a more central location is needed for an order for the communes to properly coordinate. However, there are also a few issues that still need to be worked out, and we must make sure that the movement of the communal congress to a more central city like Novosibirsk is done officially, through a democratic vote. Therefore, we shall hold one final congress in Kansk to solve any remaining internal issues before moving to Novosibirsk. We'll hold the last communal congress in the city of Kansk before relocating Novosibirsk. Political power? Stability? Do svidania. What does that mean? Huh. Non-discrimination and resolution is still going on, which is fine. We're still doing more infrastructure there is very good. 6 to 2, very, very good. I'm feeling pretty good about this campaign so far. I like it. I like this. I, the SBA is a fun nation. Or for territory to play as. 0.95 billion. We need more growth. 0.4. Oh boy, that's not good enough. Inflation's doing really well, though. What's, what happens if I just, just max this out? Dodge potentially dangerous deficits. We're only able when we have a deficit, huh? It's alright. How's the schools being built? Oh, or prisons. Oh, we must have built another prison. Nice. It gives us stability, which is pretty nice, too. We need more army bases as well. Palisburg is gone. Paraguay. Three visions, one victorious cause. Oh, someone else happened there. What is this looking like? Are they actually in the OFN? Beach. Unsung warriors. Anarchy of families. Provisional occupation. That's a lot of extra political power. No. Yeah, that sucks. Are they actually in the OFN, though? They are. That's awesome. That's actually really cool. That's actually really quite awesome. Awesome, 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 awesome. What do we have here? Any expatriates? We're okay. Uh, after this one, let's do rectify the rural urban split. Reorganizes large cities into autonomous communal governments. Honest for humanity, influence of the church, present the cure. As a solution to the problems we face. Let's do rectify the rural urban split. The first major issue that Congress of Kansk has chosen to focus on is a rural urban split. While most of our rural comrades have been able to begin reorganizing the villages into proper anarchist communes, our urban comrades have had difficulties. The large population of the cities combined with a high concentration of people has led to efforts requiring more intensive care and resources in order to succeed. With the consolidation of some of the other new communes, we can afford to devote more time and effort into properly reorganizing the cities. These communal governments, more than anything, will set the model for any future communes. We must try our hardest to truly liberate all the people who live in the free territory and show them the light of anarchism. Oh god, gods of the north. Great. Nice. Provisional Resource Council. Uh, let's see, loose stability, our econo economy will be slightly more centralized. Um, sure. Ooh, I'm part of the General Assembly, though. Oh, the first one out. Propose is one. Anything for comrades? Yes. Up here, most is not really. Let's talk. Um, let's spend our PP first, then. Hmm, returning expatriates, that's okay. Agricultural mechanization begin to improve as well, which is nice. Research speed. Research will begin to slowly improve. Admin offices. Um, begin to slowly improve. Soviet infrastructure. The power workers' organizations. Getting more daily political power is pretty nice. And industrial expertise does go up as well. I want to try that one. Get more daily political power sounds really nice. And... Worker training. Yeah, I want more expertise. Alright, uh, let's talk. So we have one, we need one more. So you're at minus four, negative two, zero. That's good. Of course we must stand together. This is one arm XP. That's totally fine. Six to two. Very nice. Rebuild key railway links. Transporting material from Norals to our industrial and commercial centers in the south has been a difficult endeavor. The purpose for us has made the establishment of roads and railways difficult to say the least, but there is another venue. By having our men reclaim Dudinka and reconnect it with the old Soviet railway built as part of the Siberian plan in the 30s, we can use the Yenitsi River to once again ferry products to more hospitable destinations downstream. Yes. Absolutely. Little fires burn brightest. Bright. Orange, that's the color of love. Some will tell you it's a dark, passionate red. Others will tell you it's a deep blue to arrive at the darkest trenches of the ocean. Love is not a rainbow of colors, but from the years spent learning, crying out their eyes, and screaming at the top of their lungs, love is not a collection of experiences. Love is a spark, a wild, angry creature that thrashes around in a person's heart the moment they see someone. The one, in that tense moment of first meeting, the brain is hijacked, all senses thrown to the wayside. Who needs senses anyways? 
of his pain. A battered and broken creature that has suffered too long inside your stomach. It yearns for freedom. For a miracle to escape its cage, yet it remains dormant and docile. Love. It's a broken promise. The jealous and bitter creature tired of putting up with non-existent BS. It rips open its chest and pulls out its being heart and demands its partner shatter it to the ground and turn away as its pieces scatter into the wind. Love is forgiveness. A remorseful and pitiful creature, which clogs up the organs of the body of the Saris, pushing them up the throat with all their might. Love is an instant. A moment of connection between two people that sets them on the course for the rest of their lives. They might think they know love, but one doesn't feel it until the moment it makes itself known. Above all else, love is victorious. Until it's not. <laughs> love is victorious until it's not. What else do we need? Artillery still? More arty? Pretty common. We need more millies. How are these going? We need more civvies, millies, you know, all that good stuff. Cool. I just want to get this industrial equipment when I'm done. Ten and nice. It's so nice. So nice. Dos Vidania. Uh, let's come over here. Oh, it's 65. Let's come back over here now, actually. Oh, I forgot to do all this stuff. Oh, my goodness. What am I doing? What am I doing? More steel consumption, huh? Prison policy effect. Oh, that's got one first. Pietro walked briskly past the proud gate of Kansk and towards the General Assembly for what it could be his last time. He shivered in the Siberian frost, his multiple layers of clothing doing little to protect him from the cold despite the elements, or maybe because of them. Pietro was frozen in his tracks. He breathed in the cool air of the city, the city he built that he loved, the city where it all began. He slammed through the gate, so, met, so many engravings on it from so many expeditions, it began to set in with him. This was real. Him, Pietro, Siuda, was forging a new Russia hand in hand with his communal brothers. It felt so final, though. There's no going back now. He had to lead too many armies. He had too many had died, of course. He must charge ahead at full speed now, and actually now is spell the death of the anarchist movement. Pietro published, or pu pushed off the gate, and continues to walk to the General Assembly. Throwing open the door, Pietro saw the usual suspect stepping up at his desk, writing something. Valentine gesturing to a map decorated with cities labeled friendly and opposed, and Mishrenko attempting to cross out all the ones labeled friendly. And hundreds of other people chatting about the assembly hall. Pietro smiled to himself. They were a ragtag bunch. He found that fitting for the torchbearers of the anarchism. It ought to be a movement of many people from all backgrounds. Pietro shook hands with Valentine and nodded in respect to Mishrenko before taking his seat on the bench. Ladies and gentlemen, as the last of us trickle in on the chilly Siberian morning, I would like to say a few words before we begin. So you stood in awe of the crowd of the movement. What we have done here is the, what the nightmares of Tsars and fascists alike are made of. We have stood up together. Through our loyalty to each other, we have freed our people from the tyranny of the state. But much more is to come. We have a lot before us. I can tell you it won't be simple or enjoyable all the time. It will be hard, and all good things in life are fought for, not handed to us. We have fought for freedom here, but I cannot sleep at night. Comrades, knowing that there is still much work to be left to do. Bitter watch as the doors of the assembly close. I believe we are all here. If you take your seats, we can begin. Our work will never, of course, be over, but eventually someday, maybe. Expand the power grid. Even more stability would be super good. You know what's good? We're going to get out of this one. Get more GDP anyways. And repurpose Soviet infrastructure would be nice. Ah, oh, we can wait for that one. Why not? We'll get repurpose Soviet infrastructure. Even though it doesn't give us any more social development, there's a chance it will give us some. And I want more admins, offices, and more GDP in general, so... 0.99, of course, 3.6, 30%. It's going to start skyrocketing, which sucks. And But the GDP is 11 billion. Honors for humanity. When the Soviet Union fell on the Central Siberian Republic splinter, the people were left adrift, with lawlessness plaguing the land. To deal with the chaos, many people turned to religion, leading to the church becoming a very powerful influence in Central Siberia. While we have no interest in outright banning the church, we must accept to curb its influence on our populace. We must take efforts to educate the populace about secularism and inspire their hopes in the communes, lessening their dependence on the church for stability, which will auto also utilize the church, wealth that we have been able to obtain for our own purposes instead of returning it to the church. Such efforts may seem controversial to some of our comrades, but it is necessary to help forge a better society. Cool. And over here, actually, um, I'm just going to lower it a little bit more. It's fine. I, I just want to gotta keep an eye on this. The interest is not bad, but if we, like, if we were to max it out, 4.9% is not bad for GDP growth, real GDP growth. If we were to max it out, we get a lot more. Actually, you get 0.5, you get 1% more. Roughly. You get roughly 1.1% 1. 1, 1 more, which is not bad, but at the same time, just... I want to keep it under control for now. We could do this as well, but... Mm, I don't want her output. And we need more output, no matter what. Oh. Good luck, guys. Good luck over there. Is this the most optimal way to play? Probably not, but, you know. Also, we could do fresh off the press. This is more growth. We could lower inflation with uh, counter pennies, but that wouldn't really work. do very much poverty. Reduction of the poverty, the rates of decrease on GDP growth. Uh, is that 0 0.01 or 0 0.1? 0 0.01, if it was 0 0.1, that'd be really good. Holy crap. But it is not. Now, pain plea. 
Sophia smiled politely as she walked up to the podium, her heels clicking on the floor. Her snow white fur coat and crimson red lips were a sharp contrast to the suited at best and in rags at worst audience. She fiddled with the papers, smiling awkwardly to the security council, her pearly white teeth nearly blinding many of its members. Pieter gave her a nod and the blonde haired woman began speaking. God, we love blondes. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen of the Kansk. My name is Sofia Petrova. I'm a wealthy upstart from the city of Tomsk. She paused for a second, trying to gauge the audience's reaction. My life revolved around administering my father's business, caring for my two lovely girls, and expanding my knowledge with the night classes I've attended, all three of which were taken from me. Sophia's smile flickered just for a second, like a flame of a candle being blown on. I'm not here to give you any kind folks my sob story, the woman said, retrieving a silk handkerchief from her pocket and dabbing at her crystal blue eyes. I'm here to say that there is good in the world, that not everyone in that city was evil. I've wholeheartedly accepted that this is simply the way things, way things go, you know? <clears throat> no one laughed a little too hard to the silent audience. Sophia, not missing a single beat, continued on. <clears throat> I know you are angry and that you want justice. I want justice too, but I ask you to show mercy in your justice. Tomsk was pillaged. We lost everything. We're willing to not only live within this land, but love it. We yearn to experience your brotherhood. My only caution, Sophia offered a few a pathetic half smile. Let the people build equality, don't thrust it upon them. Sophia descended the podium, her head down as she returned to her seat. She crossed her legs and put on her biggest grin, and she knew in some communes they would have shot her just for saying that. Uh, that she administered a business. All she could do was look to the members of the council and await their justice. Um be more cooperative. Placing the transition under jurisdiction of the army will ensure it remains peaceful. The people must decide their fate. Present the cure. And the Tsar was opposed. The people turned to another government in the form of the USSR. When the USSR fell, the people turned to yet another government in the CSR. Yet in the end, the CSR fell like the two governments before. These states were unable to deal with those problems that plagued Russia, and so they collapsed. However, where statism failed, anarchism has succeeded. Indeed, in a short period of time, Central Siberia has soared by leaps and bounds. Indeed, it seems that Russia has fallen ill, and anarchism is the obvious cure to this woes. We owed it to the stalwart doctors that ensured that the cure is properly administered. Motion pass, great. So we're still not making any of these, but whatever. Uh, we can probably lower one of these by one. Uh, actually, no, I won't lower any of them yet. Anything up here? Motion, yes. Let's go get some more political power with uh, socialism, yes. Oh, look at that. Social democracy. Cool. Alright, so what can we do down here? I'll do the most expensive one. Scientific research, yes. 3.6 billion, not bad. Not great, but not bad. Temp tax cuts, we can do that. 0.78 billion is not that bad, though. GDP it looks pretty stagnant. 4.2 percent. And present the cure, of course. I just love looking at the screen so much. And I don't worry about trade at all. It's so nice. It's so nice not having to think about trade. Revenue is not much. Um. So when is this one going to get go up higher? Dysfunction. No, this one. 11. Power tools. The so power tools are rudimentary factory lines. Oh, look at that. Uh, get 10% more factory output, 20% more dockyard output, which doesn't matter. The battle of Ansun Yun, oh, look at that. 10% more construction speed, 10% uh, more resource efficiency game, 10% more consumer goods production factor, 2% more growth multiplier, better naval industry costs, and uh, military procurement costs. Not bad. If God were real, we must abolish him. Many things are to blame for the downfall of Russia. The poor plan on, planning of Bukharin and the power of hungry generals, crumpling Russia up in their hands and scattering into the wind, often receive the blunt force of trauma of the plane. What so many forget do their unwavering commitment to the God is the role of the church. On surface level, one would be hard pressed to guess the church as the root of, un of all evil, but it wouldn't be too far from the truth. Believing in God is opposed to the anarchist mindset in and of itself to be a servant of God is to be endowed with the power of the individual above all else. Those who draft the different versions of the Bible take the chance to manipulate the people's will to their own. As the centuries have passed, the word of God, if it even existed, has been twisted and mangled to the point where it's hardly recognizable. A free land means freedom of, from all tools of the state, to which the church is just one of many. That being said, the motion to confiscate the wealth of the church was one of the brutal debates, with the priests of Kansk engaging in a multiple hour long debate with Ciudad over the use of the church for good and evil. Burn the people's OPA? Jesus was a socialist after all. Socialism. Liberty all encompassing. With all major issues settled, the last Congress of Kansk had begun to wind down. All major internal issues seemed to have been settled with the creation of communes and councils proceeding smoothly. The Congress shall conclude with a full moral vote to have all future meetings be based in Novosibirsk. Against all odds, the free territory has not only been able to expand but prosper and spread anarchism all across central Siberia. We fought in Ukraine and at Catalonia and finally here in central Siberia. We have succeeded. Freedom has been brought to the people and a new dawn approaches for the free territory. A new dawn in which we are able to enjoy the fruits of liberty. Cool. Which is a strain. Communes, some communes become more cooperative. Which is nice. Let's keep working on our industry because I completely neglected it, which is my bad. Completely my fault. We're researching things we can't even produce yet, so that's completely my fault. 
Uh, not bad, not bad. Ta I kind of want to do a tax cut. Oh, yay! If you want to do this, please go ahead. Or maybe I should read this one. I've never read this one before with the industrial equipment. The economy is doing great, and new reforms in industrial subsidizing have resulted in the shipping of updated industrial equipment across the country. Products are being produced quicker and cheaper. The further progress of mechanization into the once ossified industrial world will prove a boon to the worker and manager alike. No more long, horrible hours. No more subpar products screwed in by imperfect hands. Uh, the industry continues to march forward. Thanks for a long time coming, however. Increases in budgets and a renowned, renewed focus on what our industries are making have increased support for a much needed renovation of our country's industrial equipment. Excellent! So how does that affect this? Taking control for ourselves now. the power of the people grows. Does that help us out at all? This month we expect to experience a 0.35% growth. Show broken? Alright. 0.85, not bad. 4.4 is not terrible either. Cool. And liberty, of course, all encompassing. I just want the biggest economy. A massive economy. An economy that makes me feel good. Yeah, I just go, wee! We're spending a lot of money here, man. A lot of money. Oh, what's this? Expanding mining operations? That's not bad. Expand petroleum excavation. Increasing your GDP by 1%. Let's do expanding mining operations first. I'll do both. Screw it. It's just debt, right? It's just debt. That's all it is. Just debt. Oh. I forgot to do this stuff, didn't I? Um, can we convince? Yeah. You can have the PP for that. They support us. And over here... Economic resistance? Oh, a economic autonomy, I mean. Yeah, that's, about, that's fine. And no, minus one. Minus one. That's fine. Yeah, there you go. I love bribing people so they can support us. Ah, there goes. Poverty relief. We, we want to get that one immediately next. Oh, Borman's doing really quite well, is, aren't, isn't he? But better for us, he's doing okay. Not bad, though. Our last hope. How many times had Pieter Ciudas stood before the General Assembly, his comrades at his side? How many more times would he? The questions clouded the young man's mind as he climbed up to the balcony of the Kansk City Hall, the city where it all began, where he first protested against the Central Siberian Republic's hypocrisy, where he organized a revolt, where he developed a friendship with Ivan Stepanov, a man he would have disdained. He supposed that was the beauty of anarchy. He didn't know what would come next. He certainly knew they would, he would like to, but he would never ever achieve them. He was unsure. He had a report from both the East and West, neither were promising. In the middle of them both was the free territory, the safe zones between the sadists. They will most certainly send their planes and tanks, but what would they falter on is their message. A person will not become a fascist or socialist if you shoot them long enough. What changes people's as words? A uniquely human trait. Siuda saw the thousands crowding the city square and he saw hope of people who have been seen enough suffering for their lifetime. Uh, they were going to decide the fate of Russia, the people before him. It was up to Pieter to help them guide them towards good. Comrades, those of you who are joining us for the first time and those who have followed us since the beginning, I welcomed you. The people began to applaud, some chanting his name, something that didn't set right with Pieter. Regardless, he continued on. Today the great struggle to come to Russia enters its next age. We will face enemies who wish to divide us, to subvert our agenda, and substitute their own. They wish to manipulate us, to force us back under the boot we crawled out of. Comrades, will we, will we let that happen? The symbol of masses saying a course of liberation and making their stance clear the state has no place here. Safety are most important. Right. Anarchy is the future. Daily social support. Nice. That's actually really good. And since we'll get stuff unlocked, the Gardens of the Revolution. Uh, reform becomes there. Get daily army XP. That looks pretty good. But what's this? Develop the free territories? Uh, reform industrial committee. Um, increase our GDP by 5%. Oh. Develop in the free territories. Inflation increase. Oh, that's not good. Um, honestly? I like getting more GDP. That seems pretty good. I do want to do this one, though. To get more daily army XP. It's not very much. It's 0 .01 every day. We don't need more for now, I think, but develop the free territory. Our territory was never a major focus for the former Soviet government. While we did receive investment in the form of an expanded Trans-Siberian Railroad and some upgraded machinery for our urban centers, the Soviet Union simply didn't have the time or resources to invest into our home like it did in other regions. This wasn't always meant to be the case, however. The Siberian plan would have included increased development of our civilian infrastructure and expansion of the cities, and major investments into our military industrial plants. There would have been almost complete vertical integration of our military industry, from the extraction of unrefined iron in the ground all the way to the manufacture and distribution of Kalashnikovs. While this plan was unfeasible at the time, are given our newfound resources. These plans can finally be realized. Facing inwards. On you go, on you go. Last stop for us there. Pietro gripped the suitcase tightly in his sweaty palms. A Trans-Siberian Railroad was like the sun. It was reliable and on the present. Pietro smoothed out his suit and stretched, standing up from his seat. It was nice to have something to ground him in reality. He could barely believe how everything had changed, like a train barreling its way down the tracks with the brakes cut. They had to run out of rail eventually, right? One day the people would realize that killing everyone in a mob would not be the solution to the problem. Surely he wouldn't be the one to find out. Pietro stopped off the train. Here he was, Bisk. 
Pinter looked around for any sign of, of civilization. He was the only one stepping off the train after all. He'd been briefed that the city was a backwater. It was his job to do his best appraisal and see what was good as is, what could be improved, and what had to be scraped entirely before the collapse of, very, well, pretty much everything. Pietro did the same job, just often accompanied by armed guards emotioned or motivated by large pay. Now, he was alone in anarchy, looking out at a bunch of sheep farmers tasked with turning the city into a metropolis. Pietro walked around the city, if one could call it even that. For the most part of the rural people of Besk kept to themselves, which made gathering info difficult. He saw a bar in the distance, the only thing more common than the rail in Russia. Pietro walked in, sat his briefcase down, and began jotting down his notes. And, abruptly, it felt a tap on his shoulder. Hey, stranger, who are you? The barkeeper asked. Pietro cleared his throat before entering. I'm just doing... Sir doing my job by surveying the town. Just a little research for the Agate and Opus Obisk. Pietro laughed awkwardly. Darn it, why was he being so awkward? The woman smiled despite his nervous demeanor and said, Well, Pietro, I hope you say good things about us. We don't want we don't get the love we deserve. The woman winked and walked away, leaving a stunned and confused Pietro along with his notes. He shook his head and looked back at the paper, but the words were blurred. He looked back at the barkeep conversing with the elderly man. The two shared a hearty, ha hearty laugh. Pietro swallowed and picked up his pen again, writing a simple phrase. Very human, but we're currently doing encourage the peasant communes. Communism is inherently an ideology that favors a community over private individuals. What greater community is there of men and women than that of the whole land? Well, you must encourage isolated rural communities, typically left unrepresented in government, to reach out and join the economic and political scene of the country. While production in a single rural community might be small if all the rural towns and villages across the free territory work together, then they will truly know prosperity. And then we'll come over here. Also, uh, uh, Borman won in the Germans of War, so it is what it is, but integrate the urban economics, or economies. Urban areas have always been somewhat difficult to integrate into the communal economy that we practice. So unable to provide food for themselves, often time cities will be able to trade weapons produced in the city for food and in adjacent towns. With the development of localized production uh, of guns in small town centers. Now, this economic balance has been thrown off. In order to comp compensate for this lost revenue stream for the cities, we must encourage the cities to better utilize the resources, namely their larger scope pools and additional manpower to produce more specialized items and civilian goods that they can use to continue bringing capital and food into the city. Nice. And we're going to keep going all along this way because I completely forgot about it. We definitely need to stuff a little bit more. And not bad overall. Oh, that, the GDP ratio went down slightly. Not bad. But let's come back up here and show some motions. So we just did empower the assembly, I think. Industrial committee. Less ability. More debt ceiling would be bad. Let's promote direct democracy first, though. How's that looking? Two to five, not good. Send them whatever they need, yes please. Uh, zero, good. It's only fair, yes, yes, yes. Negative two, huh? Zero, good. Let's talk. Need one more now. Negative three, negative two, negative two. Anything for our comrades, that's fine. Hey, six to two, not bad. And a modernized freight train network. We're currently primarily relying on old Soviet railways and gauges from the early 20th century. By modernizing the links from Norsk to Dudinka and Leo Sobersk in the south, we can greatly improve our situation, which is true. Feberestus, I looked at him Paraguay, huh? Not bad. Poland's not yet lost. Goodbye, Poland. And we've been improving our society overall just a whole bunch as well. So, Other than that, not much has really happened. At least our poverty rate is now 71%, which is not bad. It's quite a bit better than it was before, so. Um, nascent industrial base. Awesome. Expertise. Uh, I'll go from here to here, which is quite a bit better, actually. Courtesy call. And the bustling free city of uh, uh, Novosibirsk. People don't see people, sure. They saw people, but uh, not for what they were. They saw for coats and hats. They didn't see the people they walked past. Much was, Such was the nature of the metropolis, even in an anarchist society. Tilo Tehomir didn't like that. Surely people weren't hardwired to hate each other. The success of the free territory proved that. People cared about other people. That's what he told himself as he shivered outside the busiest store in the city he could find. He didn't acknowledge as people walked by while he shrug struggled to get up. He didn't find it troubling when nobody stopped to inquire why he was an outside he was outside a business with a table and poster board in the middle of a snowy evening. He knew that once his booth was set up, the people would fill the streets with lines easier to contribute. Hours passed. Tehomir sipped at his coffee to keep himself warm as people passed. He watched them all he tried to notice them, just to see if they would notice him. Something about the city vexed people. They were focused on where they were going, but they, what they needed to purchase, and nothing more. Maybe they all felt, uh, just need a little nudge. All social change needs little nudges. Good evening. I've been collecting names for the, my charity, or for the charity my commune is organizing. The woman obviously had no idea, but trying to avoid confrontation, smiled. Oh, that's very admirable. I wish you the best. She attempted to continue on her way, but she was stopped by the tight grip of a man's hand. You see, man, there is troubling sickness plaguing the city, and many others, that of negligence and inaction. While we may enjoy the comforts of sitting sitting living, there are many of our comrades fighting for their lives on the front. Tear. I believe it's our duty to provide for our fellow brothers and sisters no matter where they are from. The woman recoiled, obviously shaken. She looked around for support, someone to free her from the clutches of the man grabbing her in the middle of the plaza, but found people continuing as they were, unbothered. She frowned. Not because of her situation, but because no one even acknowledged it. She furrowed her brow and turned back to the man at the table. How can I help? Ah, there goes specifically. Goodbye. 
After that, reorganize it. Oh, more growth. Ooh. No, that's not bad. Ugly truth. Bad day to be Polish? Seems like most days would be bad to be Polish. Reorganize the industrial centers. At its heart, communism is about the community above all else, and the idea that everyone can contribute to a common good. Such an idea of community is eager to develop in the tight-knit villages or town communities, but far more difficult in large cities. We must endeavor to promote a feeling of solidarity and brotherhood among citizens living in these cities. Such commodity begins in the workplace, among your co-workers and colleagues in the factory. In order to achieve this, we will rip out the old ideas of, of boss-worker relationship and institute a new system of worker self-management. Um, we get more weekly manpower, it's not bad. It does help us a little bit. I think it's pulling. Stability, we're already at 82%, which is pretty nice, honestly. It's not too bad. Poland Feldzoy. Feldzum. Might just want to keep our political power. Exploit uranium deposits. It's not bad. Not bad whatsoever. Right now, the score is led by Ger uh, not Germany, but America. The biggest military, huh? They don't have a lot of victories, though. Neg negative 150, though. Oh, wow. Kind of sucks, bro. But the same as these guys. Huh. Oh, the BN, huh? That's cool. Good job, BN. Over here, over here, forty percent, still slightly going up. Uh, military austerity. I don't want to cut that one. Just the attack, attack, attack. All right. One point three billion is quite a bit. Mill austerity. Uh, we're still, we're spending quite a bit on the civilian stuff too. So, mm, four point one. The diplomatic approach. Excuse me, Carmel. Do you have a moment to talk about what you can do for the free territory? Then Neil began to formulate a response to the man at the door, but was never afforded the chance. You have the ability to help your commune in more ways than you can imagine. It's not just the Black Army that defends us, it's the people of the factories and those willing to march in the streets to spread our message. Daniel smiled politely. He didn't bother these tops. He didn't hate where he lived. He didn't like it either. It wasn't Kimarovo. Daniel was just trying to get by. He worked at the steel mill until 6. He picked up his dinner and returned home, ready to settle down for the night and do it all over again. He didn't care much for the liberation, this, and people's justice, or struggle, or whatever the buzzword this week. Hey, I appreciate it, but I'm okay. Thank you. Enjoy the rest of your night. Daniel began to close the door, but was stopped when the unwanted by guest quite literally put his foot in the door. He may be okay, but how's your neighbor? Uh, your family. The issue with cities that can sometimes be apathy. I'm sure you understand that. I mean, yeah, I guess I do, but, uh... What you may not understand, comrade, is how integral you are to the bigger picture. The regimes before you saw you as a number. A line on a chart. I'm not here to bug you or ruin your night. I apologize if I have. The man pulled his, pulled his out, foot out of the door, testing to see if Daniel closed the door on him. No, no, you're fine. I'm just tired, you know. Got off work and everything, Daniel said. Leaving through the door. Uh, leaving the door open, I mean. The man took his chance, stepping in through the door, pamphlets in hand. Daniel stammered some kind of objection and out, but the man had already entered, discussing the opportunities before him. Daniel decided this was going to be how life was going to be on from now on. Might as well make the best of it. A city's only strong as you make it. Hmm. Inflation will increase. It's not bad. Agriculture will increase. Interventionist approach. We get to improve, huh? Build urban infrastructure. Some comes become more industrialist. Think before you do stuff. We build urban infrastructure. Though central Siberia was spared from the wrath of the German bombers that plagued the lands further west, its seas have now escaped damage entirely. The collapse of the central Siberian Republic. And the subsequent wars fought to deliberate the region of left the infrastructure of the urban centers in dire need of repair. Thankfully, with the peace finally brought to Siberia, and the newly established communes more than willing to re begin rebuilding, the task should be easily com able to com be completed. Yeah, words are hard. Uh, words are difficult. Nice, not bad. Uh, reunification of Russia, we have to wait until what, 70... 67? 69! Holy crap, we're here for a while. We're here for a long time. Oh, do you have extra production stuff? Well, that's not bad. Um, I want more millies, probably, honestly. I want more civvies, but let's go two here, and then go two, two there. There we go. So now I should get some motorized. Now I should get some jet fighters. All good stuff. Motion pass, great! Industrial regulations. Industrial committee. Lose some stability. Let's get some more debt ceiling. I like that idea. You know, we'll get more political power first. I get the PP first. I want PP. Not bad. Negative two, negative one, negative one, negative one. Yes. State emergency in Brazil. Oh boy. Five. Let's talk. There you go. There you go. Not bad. I'm waiting for more of the stuff to pop up because we might as well just keep the PP now. Yeah, that would be too bad. The bounty of the Siberian plan. I don't want to hurt inflation. I'm a little worried about the economy because the debt just keeps going up. Debt to GDP and inflation. and Not inflation, but the GDP just does not go up as nearly as much as it probably should. Still. Just a little worried about this. I don't mind cutting civilian austerity, but... Or military austerity, I should really say, but still. That's not a lot of growth, either. I mean, it's okay for now, but... 
You never know in the future. The Bounty of the Siberian Plan. The Siberian Plan is almost complete. Already thousands of industrial machines distributing across the whole Siberia, both the cities and towns alike, are beginning are being installed and tested for the first time. Electrical lights beginning to shine in places that never had so much seen a light bulb before. Just as thousands of positions and new coal plants across Siberia open up, the standard of living for millions across Siberia is about to experience a quantum leap. And in doing so, we will thrust ourselves into becoming one of the most foremost industrial powers of Russia. At this rate, we may one day eclipse even Germany. we more industrial, so be nice. Think, think. Even though we do need to do a lot of this stuff as well. So, I mean, we'll get there eventually, we promise. Public subsidy is higher? Not bad. Yeah, we'll get there eventually, man. What are we building? We're still building up prisons? Nice. Uh, we're good on admin offices. It gives us more political power, which is great, but still. How many Indies is this? We have the economy? I guess. Khanate of Kalat. What happened to Afghanistan? Huh. Higher port instructors? Absolutely. Yes. That's why we want to save our pee-pee. Save your pee-pee. Don't use it too fast. Keep building, keep building, keep building. Get some jet fires, get some casks, get some main battle tanks, get some APCs. And artillery is not looking good, but we did make you guys 40, 20 combat with, so. It is what it is. Let's see. Establish a council of trade unions versus encourage a constancy. Constancy. Uh, that's not bad. Uh, looking away. Lightman for all. While well, Russia has been embroiled in the consistent or constant civil wars and skirmishes that have resulted because of this warlordism, the superpowers of the world have been advancing the technological arsenal. From the space race to the development of transistor computing, they have expanded their computational, agricultural, and industrial output tenfold while we've been forced to rely on decades old machinery. Ever to bring ourselves up to that level, we must begin investing into the local schools, universities, and labs in the free territory. Giving these centers of learning, funding, and autonomy is the surest way to raise our educational standard. Academic base. Where are we for academic base? That's nice. Good. Oh, yeah, we can definitely do that. We are really not that far ahead. Production goods factors? Nice. That's great. Just gonna grab it and drag it up. Uh, training? Uh, that's still so good to do. Ah, we'll do it next. Why not? A lot of people oppose this, which kind of sucks, whatever. It's fine to get the manpower. It's fine. Oh, negative four is not good. Negative three is not good either. Negative two is better. Stand together. Manpower. Of course. There you go. Lose some army XP, but that's okay. It's all for the society. Because you do know we live in a society. We have nothing there. Darn it. Not bad, though. Not bad, overall. Urkutsk, Kachita, Gillian. Oh, do they. Oh, they haven't. Been... Oh, they finished off the Divine Man of Siberia. Omsk is struggling. Komi. And West Russian. Oh, they're guaranteeing each other. They have a non-aggression pact with each other. Okay. Interesting. Well, I'm glad they can't unify yet, then. That's actually really good for us. They they cock-blocked each other. That is so weird. But, honestly, it's kind of nice. Think, think. Ramil's office was a mess. Papers scattered all over the floor, only distinguishable by the different colors of ink on them. Maps hung from the walls, decorated with X's and check marks, as if he were a pirate hunting for a lost treasure. Ramil wasn't searching for gold pieces or long-forgotten jewels. The treasure Ramil sought out was worth more than any metal. He was hunting for hope, to which he found absolutely nothing. Ramil heaved a large bookshelf off, large book off the shelf, and set it down with a thud. Why had they chosen him for this? He flipped through the pages, looking for something, looking for his hope. Book number 480 was no different than the last. Ramil resigned to his chair and messages, massaged his temples. Was he really going to find the answer in a book? Which document outlines the difference between helping and hurting? No matter how many times he read over the plans of the Siberian plan, he couldn't help decide what was good and bad, what should be presented to the Security Council, and what shouldn't. Three knocks at the door finally broke the silence. Ramil rushed to answer before almost Pietro, holding two cups of coffee. It's midnight, you know. Ramil wiped the sleep from his eyes and nodded. Well, let me in. I might be able to help. A long night ahead. As much as I want to do this one. Trust in the educators. Some have argued that in order to bring our educational system up to power with our more advanced neighbors, we need to place the educational system under the power of the military council, so that we might bring all students and educators to the same level of educational quality across the board. This is foolish. Different regions will have different needs. Rural villages might want to teach their students about tractor maintenance and re engine repair, whereas cities might want to educate their students in power production and computer science. We should trust local educators to decide on a curriculum that benefits their community's needs. Pretty much, man, pretty much. 85% stability, not bad. After that one, we're going to keep going as much. We're just going to just b run through all the stuff. And they'll do the Gardens of the Revolution. We'll just wait. We might as well wait. Uh, let's get some too. Yes, heavy machinery. Yes, please. Add to the depth. Yes, please. Hey, it went down and it's going to go back up a little bit. Ooh, it's got a little pokey up there. I like that. 
Inflation? How do we control inflation? I have no idea. It just seems like it's just all kind of random. Yes. Yes. Promote Black Army Discipline? Oh, you bet we are. And let them in for all and candle lit reading. Nice. Open free territory. Uh, trusting the educators. Not bad. Candle light reading. And they'll probably do it, inspire progressive thought. Yeah, I'll get more political powers. Not bad. We don't really need that immediately, though. Hmm. We'll see. Yanya's mother bent over the boy, kissing him on the forehead. Yanya, his dark brown hair, messy and dirty, beaming up at his mother. He was going to school. Well, okay, it wasn't school school. This kind of school that Misha and Gleb got to go to. The school got them way up too early in the morning and, and be gone for almost a whole day. He couldn't attend uh, their uh, schools and if he wanted to. His family needed him on the farm. His chief was uh, feeding the horses. A very prestigious title, his mother assured him. Still, such an important title would only carry him so far in life. What he really needed was to learn how to read. She pulled open the door, wished her son the best, and practically pushed him off out into the Siberian wasteland. Yana stood on his porch for a while, simply staring back at the stars above him. He wanted to know more about them. How did they get there? Who put the stars where they were? He hoped he figured it out at his lesson. Yana traversed the village, walking past the houses of all of his neighbors, of course. Um, their children snus nestled snugly in the beds. He wasn't tired. He was a big boy who'd been whose bedtime had just been abolished in the name of the state. Uh, maybe it was against the state. He wasn't really sure what a state was. He wondered if the stars had states, and if they had bedtimes too. Yanya knocked on the oak door to the Popoff house. Within seconds, the door swung open, revealing the apron-clad Miss Popoff. Hello, Yanya. I'm glad you could make it. You can join the other boys in the dining room. Let me get your coat. When she unbuttoned her coat, a rectangular object dropped from the outside inside. Dropped out from inside. What did you bring with, Yanya? It's a book. I'm going to learn to read. The child grinned from ear to ear, the elderly woman before darting to meet with the rest of the classmates. To lead, one must first read. Develop the Altai region. Altai is a region of great industrial potential. While infrastructure is minimal in the region, its natural resources are practically untapped, and a large enough population sustains several mining extraction and factory sites, even just the first step to achieving this goal of industrialization within this region. That being laying down railway tracks should be enough to begin boosting agriculture and mineral output over the course of the next few weeks as we begin pouring resources into the region. But if you enjoyed this video, leave a like. Subscribe if you are new. Check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow. We're going to spend a lot more time pushing through this part of the regional stage and hopefully going to unite the rest of Eastern Siberia with us. Thanks for watching. Have a great, great, great rest of your day.